Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to talk about temperature and specifically the differences between the Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin scales. So first of all, what is temperature? When you measure temperature, you're actually measuring the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. And scientists use two scales, really. We use the Kelvin and the Celsius scale, and you're probably already used to seeing degrees C, but we'll learn about Kelvin this year. So <clears throat> starting with the Celsius scale, base, it was based on the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. So I think the guy ended up being called Lord Celsius. Anywho, he um, arbitrarily said, I'm going to set the freezing point of water at zero and I'm going to set the boiling point of water at 100. Where Kelvin, and he also got uh, the title Lord Kelvin, he based his temperature scale on absolute zero being the lowest possible temperature. And so the Kelvin scale, uh, zero degrees or zero Kelvin, we don't actually say degrees, <clears throat> is the temperature at which all motion stops, including atoms, electrons, subatomic particles. So uh, we'll learn uh, later this year how the Kelvin absolute zero was determined experimentally, but that's the temperature where all motion ceases. So going back to degrees C, we said the freezing point of water is set at zero C, the boiling point is 100, and so there's 100 degrees between the two. So sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the centigrade scale, meaning that there are a hundred gradations between the freezing point and the boiling point of water. So um, <clears throat> in everyday life though, we much more commonly in this country use the Fahrenheit scale. So I like to point out the difference. So the boiling point of water is a hundred degrees C, which bears no direct relationship to Fahrenheit, which the boiling point is 212. And then room temperature is generally considered 20 degrees C by scientists. And in Fahrenheit, that corresponds to 70 degrees. And the freezing point of water And the Kelvin scale is much more straightforward. The freezing point of water is 273 Kelvin. The boiling point is 373 Kelvin. And 0K is that number I told you that is the absolute zero, the lowest possible temperature. So also note that we do not use a degree sign with Kelvin. You just use a capital K. So absolute zero, as I said, is the coldest possible temperature where all movement would stop. And it's a theoretical value. You can't actually get there, although in the lab you can get close. I think you can get down to like 10 Kelvin. Um, you can't actually get to zero Kelvin because to do so would mean that everything in our universe would have to stop. So again, zero Kelvin corresponds to negative 273.15 degrees C which corresponds to a negative 459 in Fahrenheit. So converting between C and K, and we won't worry about Fahrenheit anymore, um, there's two equations. To get to Kelvin from degrees C, you add 273. Even though it's 0.15, we're just going to use 273. And then for degree, degrees C from Kelvin, you just subtract 273. So here comes an example. 98 Kelvin is equal to what in degrees C? So degrees C here would be equal to 98 Kelvin minus 273. So C, K minus 273, K minus 273. And that would give us negative 175 degrees C. 
How about in the other direction? 159 degrees C is equal to what in Kelvin? So Kelvin is C plus 273. So Kelvin here would be C, 159, plus 273, and that would give us a value of 432 Kelvin. So um, we'll be using these two temperature scales quite a bit during the year, um, and occasionally you'll have to convert back and forth between C and Kelvin. Um, Fahrenheit, after you do one little worksheet with a few calculations, we'll leave Fahrenheit behind us and just stay with degrees C and degrees Kelvin. So for today, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.